What, what does the Spocker do again? Hey everyone, welcome back to Linux Weekly, Daily Wednesdays, where we sit back, relax, take that midweek break, talk about some of the fun things going on in the world of Linux and open source of events. Don't join every week by Joe Bryant. We're just talking to everybody else, hanging out, watching us live on Twitch. A little bit of a pre-show. We like to do that to see what's going on with the community. Mm-hmm. Man, <laughs> you got some stuff going on, Joe. What you I got? do. Oh, well, one is I got a new mug to use when I'm on LWW. It's this really cute strawberry shaped mug. <laughs> and it's even got a little mug, a uh, little strawberry charm on it. <laughs> and I've never used it <laughs> yet. I haven't used it yet. So there we go. <laughs> <laughs> now we just and, have to see if you survive till the end of the show. Yeah. <laughs> but you could have been the poison berry. Yeah. The Steve, poison you're going to be the number one suspect if anything goes wrong. Yeah. But I thought it was so cute. And the other thing I've been wanting to show here on LWW of this cute little pink plush penguin. It's so cute. And this was given to me by a really uh, sweet little girl at, at scale 21x <laughs> for my collection because she watches the podcast truly horrifying <laughs> so cute <laughs> man i got a bunch of stuff i've been playing around with we were talking about that right before we hit the go button uh if anything dies if jill disappears it's because i got like this ipolex one gig to 10 gig adapter plugged in why because i'm trying to simplify things no, there's the um, you know, if you see like a jump cut at some point during this episode, mm -hmm. still getting the um video over IP system in the studio dialed in, dialed down. It's working a lot better than I was expecting it to. NDI five, NDI six, the SDK mm -hmm. for that is already out, so we're gonna start picking at that too. But the big news, what's in the show title that you're here for? Let's see how long I can keep this going, make you wait, like ah. <laughs> What is the big news? Well, Ben. Yeah. Oh, Ben. We, yeah, we've he's... talked about Ben before, Jill. Yeah, we have. In fact, uh, we did uh, last September. We had talked about Ben Skeggs stepping down as the Nouveau Maintainer. Well, the cool thing is that he is back working on it again. We were all surprised about this in the community. And... He just sent 156 new Nouveau GSP patches to the Linux kernel. The main intention here is to replace the IOCTL-like interface that sits between NVKM and the Nouveau DRM driver with more direct calls to reduce the call chain complexity and overhead. So it's really it, good. <laughs> it's kind of wild, man. You know, we definitely yeah. brought it up when he... He's been the guy behind the Nuvo project forever, Red Hat for boy, years. like just hacking yeah. away on it, and, you know, and just trying to figure it out in videos. Like, we're not going to help you do anything. And when he just quit, I was like, oh boy, that just could pretty much was the end of the Nuvo project. I'm exaggerating a little bit, but not by much. And because that just kind of came out of nowhere. He's like, you know what? I, I've had a good run. I'll still be around and I'll try to help out. And we've got the GSP, then we got the NVK, and all this is working on the other side. And we're like, okay, that's pretty good. Dropping all yeah. of this, and like all of this is the Nuvo GSP. He's doing some code cleanup, making it look nice. And I'm like, my, my first thought, of, I saw this pop up on the mailing list. And I'm like, you couldn't keep away, could you? No, no <laughs> yeah. That, that was your baby. And you're like, I, I still got to work on it. And I was scrolling down, and I noticed uh, our friend Ben's got a new email address. Yeah, at NVIDIA, <laughs> yes. <laughs> New NVIDIA employee. Hmm. No, no, you can start putting 2 and 13 together on this and go on. Oh, that, that, that's why he might have stopped. So Ben's probably been having a field day with the um, brick wall that he's been bouncing against all these years, trying to reverse engineer this stuff. Now he's like, oh, I have everything now. Okay. And I'm going to say good on NVIDIA. That's a good acquisition. That's a good person to have on your team. To help yeah. NVIDIA, you know, move the stuff over to their open source forever. I mean, that's the right person to have. We're Absolutely. Very excited <laughs> to see that. And, you know, we're coming very close to the future of um, having those NVIDIA open source drivers. So you drop mm -hmm. the card in yes. and go at it. 
Jill, have you ever used a desktop yeah. manager? Oh, yes. Absolutely. In fact, uh, actually, right now I'm using S XFCE, but I'm often in Window Maker <laughs> doing the show. <laughs> so for desktop managers, you don't mind XFCE? We were talking about that in the pre-show. Yeah. I kind of like uh, we had a new release of Q Alex. Alex yeah, LXQT. LXQT. Yeah. Yeah. And um, I was reading a discussion earlier today on uh, Hacker News. It was you were like, well, these are great. These are super lightweight, you know, compared to the big juggernauts that are GNOME and KDE. And somebody brought up a very good point. They're like, modern plasma only takes about 600 megs at boot these days, mm -hmm. which is kind of wild because like XFC is not that much lighter. Why aren't you talking about GNOME? Well, <laughs> there's reasons. Yeah. <laughs> there are reasons, but I'm always excited when somebody's working on a new desktop manager. And that's what yeah. we got. Find and an us. X11 one at that. Yeah, man. Like, you know, not, not everybody's drinking the waylaid on that mm -hmm. one. So this is an easy to use desktop manager following material design, which, okay, that's fine. Dependencies are reasonably fine. This is how you know it's X11, you know, X back. Let me see. What do I have in here? Bright light control, con man for the Wi-Fi and Compton for the compositing. Mm, mm -hmm. Yeah, I thought this was pretty neat, and mm -hmm. it's part of the Fish or Fish OS. Yeah, and part of using the Fine Toolkit, and it is under very, very active development. So much that there's a Fine Desk runner to help you recover from crashes that should put everything back where it was before it disappeared on you. Yeah, <laughs> it definitely happened. We got some nice little looking screenshots. I mean, it's not. I mean bad looking by any stretch of the imagination it looks like it has a default dark theme which i'm very, very nice. happy yeah yeah <laughs> yeah uh fin desk or fine desk you know it, it actually reminds me a bit of the after step x window manager vin i i don't i don't know why it just the 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 the, the way the tabs are aligned and it just had that after step <laughs> feel to it and, you know, the layout consists of an app bar and a task bar. And there's actually a really nice uh, system settings window where you can change you know, font size, system color, adjust your keyboard shortcuts, add apps to the app bar and choose between a dark and a light theme. But the dark one is default, like Ven stated. And uh, the Fish OS or Fish OS live and install ISO actually uses Debian 12 as its base, which was, I was really happy about. And, you know, as, as, as far as uh, most X window manager environments go, uh, Fine Desk is extremely lightweight. So it's, it, it lives in that world of, oh boy, FVWM and, <laughs> and after step and Flexbox, you know, it, it lives in that world. And it's, just nice to see that we have some new window managers coming out <laughs> it's yes. pretty neat I, i'm looking at it but watching the video go back and check out the video version if you want it's linked on the github which is in, in the show notes at the website linuxemgas.com yeah it's got desktop settings and uh the you know immediately i can see my brain goes to what are you cutting off well we're cutting off shadows on windows because those waste resources and we're cutting off animations yeah. the fade in and fade out stuff i don't like that also I love how people like to pretend that we use virtual desktops. Mm. Yeah, because <laughs> that, <laughs> that's uh, coming from the old school days of <laughs> X window managers. Yes. <laughs> that was a great idea. That was a neat thing to show your Windows brothers and sisters. I'm like, look, I do these. I think Windows even does it. And then you know what? People still don't use it. Like I, I mean, like I tried to work that into my workflow. 20 years ago. You know, what's funny, Vin, is I actually do use it in XFCE because I, I like being able to put my mouse in the, in, in the uh, corner or use the scroll wheel, you know, to move from one uh, virtual environment to the next. The reason it died for me is, <laughs> guess what I got? Multiple mm -hmm. monitors. Yeah. And, and that is, yeah. If I, if I, was, if I was having it, to work yeah. on a laptop with a single screen, yes. Okay. Maybe that would have worked. But around that time where I, I really started clicking, like, I need multiple desktops, monitors yeah, started getting multiple. affordable. Then I could hook up multiple two, then to three. So then, true. Yeah. 
that, that's <laughs> how I live my life now. Now we got barrier. Why? Because my other monitor is over there. It's a different computer over the network. Ah, <laughs> that's awesome. So, uh, yeah, <laughs> fun project. Go check it out. Happy to see. And yeah, I, I did see some blowback with the, hey, why is it not Wayland? But hey, let, it, let the guy have fun with it. Like, that, X Wayland will support it. It's not a big deal. Speaking of X, it's at the end of the next program. We're going to talk about Gesture X. Mm -hmm. Huh. Control Linux based operating systems using hand gestures and gestures. This is cool. Not feet gestures. Nay. No. <laughs> Now, this is going to be using a web map, uh, webcam and it maps custom commands to your hand wiggles. That sounds like yeah. a good idea. Nothing could go wrong there. Not at all. It's using the gesture uh, recognition model provided by the Google Media Pipe project and some of the defaults. Did I scroll by that too far? Oh, mm -hmm. here we go. Some of the defaults. Oh, boy. Uh, they include <laughs> throwing the goat for Firefox. Yes. <laughs> uh, a fisting to shut down. Thumbs up, thumbs down for your volume control, and an OK symbol for Bluetooth Connect. Uh, oh, yeah. yes, and uh, they, they even throw in a little shooty pew-pew if you want to <laughs> open Steam. That's cool. Well, then, <laughs> um, I don't know about this, because I, I see the dangers of it. Um, <laughs> you know, my first thought was, like, what gesture are you going to come up with for pseudo? Yeah, pseudo. I am root, root like a tree. <laughs> I, I can think of a two finger salute for what? <laughs> pseudo. That's that's pretty funny. <laughs> funny. Um, I was thinking there is another. Uh, this is actually a really great new tool for accessibility on Linux, especially for those that have a hard time using the mouse or the keyboard. Um. And I could see GestureX being used with sign language to launch apps. This is this is the kind of app that will will help those that you know need that have issues communicating with their computer. And uh, like Ven was saying about uh, sudo, uh, be careful not to make an RMRF gesture. <laughs> on someone's computer because that could go way way wrong <laughs> I, what what hand gesture would that be <laughs> i don't know like that you see that you need to be able to link this to the point where you have to do interpretive dance i, I need to pull yeah. off like a solid like 10 second routine of like uh, yeah like k popping around before it's like okay that's legit but <laughs> Things like this is, is always fun. Uh, as far as like usability, I don't know. Like maybe you could get yeah. into that. I, I, it always falls down to like everybody. If you've ever had a, a Wii or a Wii U or been around that, it's really, or, you know, uh, the virtual, anything that you wave your hands around to do. That's awesome. For about three minutes. Then you're like, man, this is tiring. What do you do? Especially with, like the Wii U, you cut the sensitivity all the way down. So you just barely have to move anything. <laughs> yeah. Oh, like, I think we all, we, we all want that minority report to like, Hey, do the thing, but this is just going to run the commands. And like, long as it's good, I could say, but I talk a lot. I could never have this running during a show because I talk yeah, a lot with, you my talk hands. with your hands. Yeah. And <laughs> you know, and so I would need, what, what does the Spocker do again? I didn't see that one. Last yeah. I, I saw it somewhere and I'm forgetting what it does. <laughs> I don't think there's a, but you can assign yeah. your own commands, you know, so you got the, okay, you got that. I'm not, I'm not on that stoop through the goat Spocker fisting and, uh, shoot a pew pew. Well, <laughs> yeah. Hey, go play with it. It doesn't cost anything. Oh, he needs a webcam. It's a uh, 51% Python and 48.9% pure basic. Yeah. Go try it out. Maybe mm -hmm. it'll work on uh, this new Orange Pi 5 Professional, not to be confused with the Orange Pi 5 Amateur Edition. Yeah. So, yeah, the Orange 5. Uh, Orange 5. <laughs> I'm, I'm repeating what Vince said, the Orange 5. <laughs> oh, that's pretty funny. So, no, the Orange Pi 5 Pro has just been released and includes 16 gigs of RAM out of the box for a very reasonably price. 
It can be had for $127.99 at Amazon or $109 at AliExpress. And there's other variants that are cheaper coming soon, such as an 8 gigabyte variant for $80 and a 4 gigabyte version for $60. And uh, some big news here, it also has an M.2 NVMe slot on the back and doesn't require a separate NVMe SSD hat like the Raspberry Pi 5 does. Pretty sweet. I was pretty impressed by it. <laughs> I think they're very fascinating. Um, this one has got a lot going for it, a lot packed in at a very reasonable price. Yeah. When absolutely. you look at it, that and <laughs> orange, orange pie has really been like the champion during the dark times. The past yeah. couple of years, where you just couldn't get a Raspberry Pi, a lot of uh, tinkerers and you know creators have moved over to that platform, and they're working on it. You know, it's still software wise quite a bit behind raspberry pi and like joe pointed yeah. out like this thing the orange pies traditionally they have the nvme slot like built into it where you don't have to buy a separate thing and plug it in with a ribbon cable and route it through and then <laughs> plug the new, new. yeah <laughs> one of the things we were talking about um in the pre-show though there's a huge problem with all orange pie raspberry pie 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 rock pie um Hammer Pie, I don't know, um, Mr. Pie. All of them, there's a big problem with in 2024. It's this right here. Yeah. I, <laughs> then you're not going to believe this, but that is in my uh, cart right now on Amazon. <laughs> problem is, is you can get the, you can get a quad core Ryzen 5 2400 micro, yeah. these elite desks. For a hundred bucks now, with eight gigs of RAM and an SSD, and one to another, uh, an additional Windows 10 license that you can add to your collection. Yeah, <laughs> and there's also the the Dell Optiplex 5055 series, which mm -hmm. I have several of, which are Ryzen three, five, and sevens, and those are a hundred dollars or under. Little, little tiny. These things have gone on fire sale. So traditionally, these things, you know, <laughs> you about three, four yeah. years ago, these were five, seven hundred dollar machines. Yeah. And being able to, once, you know, I said this when the Pi 4 came out, once you start going over 75 bucks, you get other competition because, you know, a, like it or not, Ryzen 5, a 2400G, even a Ryzen mm -hmm. 3, stomps. Yeah. Anything. Processing power. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you're not completely out of whack with the um, power usage either. And you got the REM. You can upgrade, you got storage, you can upgrade, you just plug a power cable into it. You don't need fancy hats, you don't need a case, it's got a case built around it. Uh, like that's, you know, I was very interested in like that's Orange true. Pi. I'd almost talked myself into like buying one or buying a Raspberry Pi 5 and I'm like, once I saw that, I'm like, nope, uh-uh, why? Because I'm just going to get one of those that'll do what I need it to do. Yeah. We did a nice, tight show this week. If you get any thoughts, hints, allegations, you want to leave a comment do that below the video uh it'll be on youtube mm -hmm. or uh, i think uh it's mirrored to odyssey we're a bunch of hippies yes <laughs> watch it which is fine it's our backup <laughs> and of course uh we put a version of the show out for patrons which is the highest quality version if that matters to you and one that you can download mm -hmm. or just stream right in your browser or through the app patreon.com forward slash linux gamecast bunch of rewards we got set up if you want to help us out would appreciate it but mm -hmm. that's gonna close this oh yeah there's also the um new theme song for linux gamecast yeah <laughs> which which was posted um I, I saw empty was like wait what and atomic was like write more lyrics yes <laughs> on um that is on the linux gamecast post from sunday if you see that you know because there's the video, and I put an MP3 if you want the MP3 download. But there's also one called Titanium Savior. Give that a oh. listen. It's about a minute long. Uh, it's about a, a long-standing mascot and a bit of backstory done in a very um, Glory Hammer-esque type jam. <laughs> cool. <laughs> All right, that's going to do it. Uh, Jordan will be back tomorrow for a little bit of uh, whatever he's doing tomorrowing. I think it's Outer Worlds and Friday. Nice. Points match with the Trackmania crew, 7.30 p.m. That's all in the schedule over on Twitch. But 
Until then, let's call it a little bit. Hey, that's the right yeah, music. Yeah, the right Roll music. Some nice, bouncy LWW music. Music. Thank you to our advisors, Omega Sonar Theron, and to our executive producers, Barbrandt, Scott M, Atomic, and our Chicago Kicks people, Empty Blasphemia King Bonge. <laughs> And our sea monsters, Hakeem, David, Darkwing, System T, Mark, DSNG, Doe, Dirty Dean. Our Death Notes, Dirty Dean. Ba oh, ba Back, Dodger. <laughs> Dirty Dean's in there twice. Okay. <laughs> Beastwick, Martin, Rohit. <laughs> There's so many, I can't read them all. Thank you all. And thank you for the follow, Ram Force. I just saw that. <laughs> Have a great rest of your week, everybody. Get up to yeah. something nefarious and don't get caught. Just make sure it's open source, possibly Linux related. And we'll catch yes. you next week. Bye -bye. Yay! Keep those penguins marching. Or rolling. Yes, yeah, so rolling. <laughs>